We're going to determine who wins the Green Copper Cannon by this preseason tournament in the IBA. That is the Imperial Blood Bowl Association. This Imperial Blood Bowl Association has players from the Wood Elves and the Chaos Dwarves in a draft league format. And this is an, a single elimination knockout preseason tournament. They all get heals at the end of the tournament. So without further ado, let's go ahead and kick things off. Sigmar's tournament now begins with this play-in game. Get the ref means that both teams receive a free bribe. Off to the races. And he's assisted by guard. And he's assisted by his assistee to the top here. Then mass guard meant to take a swing here. Down he goes. It's an early reroll. Ill-advised. Interesting swing here for the Blitz. The Wood Elves are more or less untacked. This is a very unique kind of Hobgoblin. Unfortunately, the handoff did not quite work. The tree gets back up to his feet, and he knocks down this AV-10 Minotaur. Here we go. We are blowing through, and that's an interesting reroll there. He uses leader. Odd. Uh, I'm going to check something real quick. Why does he have four rerolls still? One second. It's legal. He induced it. Uh, it was a one of the five inducements here. Bribe, extra team training, part-time assistant coach, and watering apothecary. And then he just says the other team has a bribe just due to the kickoff result. Everything's normal. Good. Just have to check. It's a three reroll league, and then you have leader is four. But that's completely legal to induce it, so no problems here. Wood Elves are pretty good, even without any skills. Throw on some, bolt on some skills, you might get a super team. Problem being, they are AV8, which makes their usage as a draft league team a little less uh, desirable than other teams. Due to this format, with uh, zero TV being associated with the positional, I would say that High Elves are of a higher order of elf for this format. However, so far so good for the Wood Elves. Both teams have a full bench due to that zero positional cost. And interesting use of the reroll. I guess it's fine, but it is fortuitous. The Minotaur is gone. Two dice here. The Chaos Dwarves would be better suited tagging every elf. Even though, sure, the elves can dodge away. Eventually they're going to fail. Risk taking. Now they're both down to two rerolls each. Not necessarily a fan of using so many rerolls so early. But the foul does come up well. Interesting decision. Down to one reroll. It looks like the Chaos Dwarves, even though they're down two pieces, they can probably uh, survive this drive and score. It is 9 to 11 on the field in favor of those Wood Elves, the Mordheim Majestics. He's knocked down. He's killed. Let's look at how important this player was. He had Finn and Mighty Bro. Still, he, ha he is a skilled player, so he will be missed. Everybody's a target. Edge 1 is exceptional. I don't feel very safe with his... 
Really? I don't feel safe with <laughs> fouling with the ball, eh? But uh, with his uh, protection here, if I were the Chaos Dwarves, I would try to go to a normal cage, even though, yes, the Wood Elf War Dancer can hop in anywhere. But still, I like the adaptation where there's two people in the middle of the cage, and it's like a barbell type formation. That'd be good against War, uh, sorry, war Elves, Wood Elves. There we go. He's cutting off the southern part of the field in the middle of the field. He's able to get two dice here. He does have wrestle, and that is good enough for the wood elves. The agility favors the wood elves. Not quite what he wanted, but hey, he uh, had a very productive turn right here. And he's in the Zorna school, schools of ivory side of the field. No tackle means it's a clean dodge. And now we have a block and tackle on a dodge piece. Down he goes. One of the essential pieces, I would say. This is going to hurt. And he can pick up on a 3+. plus. Why not, right? Interesting. He had block. Oh, so, she, so does he. Now, the Skulls of Ivory. They have a reroll advantage. And they are down a piece. Compared to the Mordai Majestics. And now they are, they're in front of the play here. Strength 4. Against Strength 4 with the assist. Bounces into the receiver's hands, which is unfortunate for the Wood Elves. They can't run away with it now. She has already been activated. Down he gets, but now the tree is stuck there. Is he going to go for the gang foul? Oh, good diving tackle. Diving tackle ends that foray. Hip hip hooray for the Zorna School Schools of Ivor. Here comes the Blitz. Down he goes. Pile driver? Really? Oh, pile driver. That's nuts. That is a lot of aggression. Unchanneled, I'd say. Yeah, and don't follow up on that tree. That's all I have to say. Just push. One die. One die, and it gets knocked out. Now it is 10 to 8. 10. Oh, look at that leap. And now the Wood Elves are very well protected, and they look like they're going to score a defensive touchdown, an essential score here. Yeah, the Chaos Dwarves have to hope for a miracle to stop uh, this touchdown. But I don't think that the Wood Elves are able to stave them off for too long. Mighty Blow, Block and Tackle. Hey, good enough. Yeah, I guess that rush is okay. At least tag is what he's thinking, and he gets there. Miraculous that the Chaos Dwarves are still in this. He might stop the defensive steal right here. Scoring a touchdown for the Skulls of Ivory is much less likely. Good dodge. Two dice. And down goes Maximilian Morris, and he's been badly hurt. 10 to 7 on the field, but he ends the drive. Touchdown, Mordheim Majestics. Majestics up 1 to 0 against the Skulls of Ivory. We had to get a replacement midseason for the Majestics. It's just because, uh, I don't know. 
for some reason or the other. I think it was that he was phasing out of Blood Bowl because he was just playing on the fumble format to gain an edge in a like uh to gain skills for tabletop. Then his tabletop league uh sort of shied away from Blood Bowl. So that you know, interesting. But um, I re I was able to say, hey, uh, thank you for your service. Uh, you know, after this tournament, uh, I'll uh, find a replacement. Where we were able to find a replacement. It's uh, it is bad form, but I don't mind. Just because he doesn't really know the culture of you. You say you're going to be part of the league. You should continue. I don't think he understood that. So my thinking is that it's you know it's fine. But if it was someone that was on the site for like five years or something, then it's sort of like, okay, that's crazy. But you see that he's playing very well, though. He's already in the lead. Can he extend that lead? Can he threaten the ball carrier? Looks like he's tagging the ball carrier. Looks like he's getting in front of the centaur. If the Skulls of Ivory can score on this drive, it would be a great benefit to them. Because then you could view the second half as a clean slate. Although, the Mordheim Majestics would be on offense. Down he goes. Like the dwarves want to knock down the tree. Chop, chop. And that ends the drive. Could he get a flash knockdown here? Can he blitz the ball out? Alright. It's worth a swing, I'd say, but... Maybe he used his blitz already? Maybe I missed it? Oh, no. Here comes the foul. PP's for sure. Ooh. He's gonna miss the next game. Game. And there's 12 remaining players on the roster for the Schools of Ivory. It's kind of a flip notion as the Mordai Majestics Enter the second half with a one-point lead. These standings don't affect the season one, uh, season two standings. However, what they do affect is the all-time standings. So, pretty cool. Can they extend the score to two? Should they score quick? Should they draw it out? I'd say they should score quick. Nice hit. Does not want to follow up, and that's fine. Russell comes into play. Every dwarf on the field has the block skill. That should go without saying. But now we know. So now you do too. And now here comes the war dancer. He's strength four. This is why he's making that jaunt. But he is rushing for this. I disagree with rush. He's going to dodge out of rush. This is two plus times two. And he fails the two plus times two. That's two plus times two without the dodge skill. Because there's a rush and a dodge out. So. Very poor odds. Nice hit. Let's get some adjacency. You can, might be able to salvage this one. <laughs> now it looks like the Chaos Dwarves are locking down. If they played their offense like they played their defense with maybe one of these guys back here representing a ball player, I think they'd be a lot happier. He's sent off. No, he's not. He got a bribe. Mm-hmm. Here's a hit. Hobgoblins are good targets. 
Even though they're not stunty, you should treat them like a stunty team and just pound the hobgoblins until they leave the field. Very well. He gets behind the defense, more or less. There is a sweeper, but he can't stop that many elves. Looks like he's going for a gang foul. Here it comes. He's beating the brakes off of Zorna the school. Good job. No blitz with the Minotaur. I think a standard black would have been fine. See, like, you're not going to be dodging out with this guy. Oh, well, he does have break tackle, so maybe, maybe. With break tackle, even right there, it's going to be difficult, is what I was thinking. Now, he can just wrap them up. And he's stunned. Uh, I'd say still some good control by the Chaos Dwarves. The Wood Elves I'm try to remove this Minotaur again. Block on block. Uh, the reroll does come into play. If this goes in overtime, it is golden goal rules. But it looks like if the Wood Elves can score one more time, that the game is more or less over. We're playing for the Green Copper Candy. This is Sigmar's tournament of the IBA. The first tournament of its kind. It's a preseason tournament. And you don't earn just the Green Copper Cannon. You earn an auto bid into the Blood Bowl Champions League. That is like a UEFA style competition in this universe. Interesting. Uh, the tree has made itself useless. Dwarves can just get behind it or stay off of it and continue their onslaught, but it seems to me that the wood elves are still in good shape. Two plus dodge out. He does not have his dodge still activate because he was dodging away from a player with tack. Good work. Now just a handoff or a pass to this fellow. And that's good enough. Well, that's a lot of rerolls, mister. You're down to one reroll to three. You better be... <laughs> You better score then, right? Probably the worst play or activation that I've seen for the Mordheim Majestics this match. Um, both teams are kind of struggling, though. Although I would say the Majestics are winning. Brawler comes into effect. That already makes it three dice for the centaur. <laughs> Better not be his blitz, huh? Oh, three edge. Worth a reroll. Block on lodge. And he gets the dice he needs. <laughs> Worth a reroll, he says, but now he's down to one reroll. And he's. He, they can counter sack him right here. It's not guaranteed that he's going to get away before his next activation. For instance, Stianek Lehenov. I get the ball. Stianig. Uh. 
not quite. Dodge is deactivated by tackle. That Minotaur wants to hit something. He's not going to get up for much else. Dodge is taken away from that passer. Looks like he's getting there. Can he dodge out? That's his last three roll now. Well, all right. Looks like it's open field time. All's well that ends well for the Chaos Dwarves. Knocked out of the game. And here comes Verissimo Tovar. Victor Duranza. Victor Duransar is going to leave the league once his team leaves the league because he doesn't have any skills. But I think you knew that. If you have skills, you go to free agency, even with injuries. After each season, those injuries are healed. We'll see. Can the Chaos Dwarves carry this momentum into overtime? Because it looks like they're going to score. Looks like it. Looks like he can also stall the game out a little bit. A little bit. That helps. That's the primary threat. Yeah, Rio's happy to see him get woken up. Not what he wanted. And he's just going to keep on pounding. Here comes the blitz. Block on Vanilla. Stunned, and now he is not going to be threatened. He has no reason to rush. Even with sure feet, it's not guaranteed. How goes the dice? An end injury is suffered. Nice little dodge. For once, his dodge skill is active. Yannig gets rid of his opponent. Excuse me. And not much of a counterattack. What they're doing is preserving themselves. Touchdown, Zaydan! Zaydan scores the touchdown, and now it is one to one as we go to golden goal time. And it is the Skulls of Ivory that get the ball first, and they're going to have 11 on the pitch, but so are the Wood Elves. Blitz is the kickoff result. Oh, okay. I'm pro elf, anti tree. Nice little dodge. He's slipping through. Let's get him behind the defense, perhaps. And. They don't have a reroll, so if they drop the ball, it's big trouble in Little China. Uh, maybe he should just put a bunch of people around the ball instead of trying to pick it up. There aren't very many good solutions here, is what I'm saying. Uh, he's going further away from the ball. Although, if this other guy can pick up the ball and throw the ball, uh, Cannoneer does not come into play. That frees up his friend? No, it doesn't. 
There's another chance at this for the Skulls of Ivory. All it takes is one touchdown and the game is over. There he goes. There he is. Cannoneer. Five plus. Five plus. That's right where he wants it. It's a uh, sort of like a rugby kick used as an offensive pass. Not bad. How goes the dice? Very nice. Strength four. Close the door. Oh my god. He catches it! Oh, two rushes to the touchdown! Mordai Majestics win the game 2-1. to one. What a game. Alright guys, bye for now.